we're going to stop for a moment, think about the revolution now that it's done, and, and kind of put a little magnifying glass on what was happening in our state during the revolution. North Carolina set up a provisional Congress that sent um, delegates to Philadelphia. Now, our legislator went ahead and did this. The governor was against it. So we have this conflict. The governor was appointed by the king. So the governor's like, no, you're not going up to Philadelphia to support these guys. No, we're not going to declare independence. My job is here as the governor. Um, in Mecklenburg County, down by the Charlotte area, county leaders voted for independence, called the Met Declaration of Independence in May 1775. Those leaders declared their independence before um, it was declared from Philadelphia. So, and, and Philadelphia saw this. There were people who saw what was written out, this declaration, and the reasons for it. And it did influence um, what was happening up in the, the Continental Congress. Um, in 1775, the Provisional Congress, now this is the group that is opposed to the governor, and the governor has been appointed by the king, passed a law that said everybody in North Carolina has to sign an oath of loyalty, that they will um, be loyal to the new nation, to the patriot cause. So they, you know, they were not going to take any prisoners. If you were going to be a part of North Carolina, you had to support independence. By April 1776, and, you know, look at this. This is May 1775. This is a whole year before we declared, as a nation, our independence. So we were ahead of the game. In April 1776, North, North Carolina declared their independence, their, um, their independence, their ind independence from England. North Carolina passed the Halifax Resolves authorizing the delegates in Philadelphia to endorse independence. So, we have Mecklenburg County declaring its independence. Here, we have now the state declaring its independence. Then there's a, then this Congress, this Provisional Congress in North Carolina, passed in Halifax, what they call the Halifax Resolves, and they're telling the people that they send up to Philadelphia for the Continental Congress, you, it is our state or our colony is choosing to go on the side of independence, and that is what we are telling you you have to vote for. And so, essentially, North Carolina was the very first colony to support, endorse, and um, take the lead in independence. North Carolina, then once we said we're independent, understand what that means. Understand what that means for all these colonies. They no longer had any written specific laws. They no longer, all our laws, all our ways of doing things, all our jury system and trials and everything was based on the, on the laws of England. And they weren't, um, our laws. So they had to create a whole new state constitution because in our, in our new constitution we had to come up with the laws and the rights we wanted. And in the, in the old constitution we were really subjects of the king and the governor that the king appointed. And so they had to come up with a whole new idea, a whole new constitution because there is no governor that represents a king telling us what to do. And there is no king or, or parliament telling us what to do. Um, North Carolina, and, and the, the patriots in North Carolina, they took this really seriously. It's like, we're not playing, you're going for independence. And so a Tory is another name for somebody who supported the king. Well, they passed, a, our assembly passed a law that said if you didn't pledge allegiance 
to the new state of North Carolina, being a part of this new country, then um, we're just going to take all of your property. Isn't that nice? It's like extortion. Either you sign or you lose everything. It was as simple as that. And so it, they were, the North Carolina Assembly was being very, very heavy handed. Um, there was a very famous battle called the Battle of Kings Mountain, where there were a group of Tories or supporters of the king, and the over mountain men, locals from our mountains, descended on them, won a very famous battle, the Battle of King Mountain. There was um, much fighting between the Whigs and the story and the Tories. Um, in our state, our state was very, it just had a lot of conflict in it during this time between the Loyalists and, and the Patriots, the Whigs and the Tories, which are other names for that. And the war left North Carolina destitute. The king broke off all the support of us. We had no money, we had no supplies, we had, didn't, we had this continental, new continental money which, which to buy things. Other countries and stuff didn't necessarily recognize it. So with all our resources pushed into the war and no way to make money, do business afterwards, we found ourselves very destitute at the end of the war. But we came back, and the title of this is just too late to apologize. It's done, it's broken. Um, we looked a little bit of what North Carolina was like during the war and some of the, the strong feelings there, and we looked at the progression of the war. Be sure you understand those vocabulary terms when you come to class tomorrow.